I have props and slides. Uh, but I, um, you know, I contemplated doing a cartwheel uh, before getting on here. <laughs> but I don't need to because I've got social media, right? Everyone's so excited about social media. As you say social media, and people's eyes light up. Like, oh, social media, there's something about it, right? You know, because it's sort of unknown and it's new and it's fresh. And you don't have to do cartwheels because social media is on your side. But here's the secret about social media. Media itself is not social. And we oftentimes make this mistake because we are enamored by the technology. We are enamored by the platforms that come up. Google Buzz came out and everybody went nuts. Google Buzz, oh my god, we got to get into Google. You know, what, is, what is Google Buzz? What's the buzz about Google Buzz? We have to know about Google Buzz. Google Buzz, you know, for about three weeks it was Google Buzz. And then people realized no one was using Google Buzz, <laughs> right? So um, we have to, you know, start to shift the focus off of the media part because that's not the part that's social. So I'm going to tell you a little story about this book, right? And again, this is a, this is a great example. This is, this is a book, so it's an object. The object itself is not social. It's media, right? There's nothing social about this. It's paper, there's words, binding. Very cool book, and we'll, we'll get into that in a little bit more. But people are social, right? And so here's the story behind this book. This is a colleague that uh, I met in London. And turns out that she had been reading my blog over a number of years. And she really had this sense of who I was, and not just sort of a business perspective, but personal. So we struck up a conversation, and we talked, and we worked together a little bit. And at the end, she gave me this book. And she told me a story about it. And it's an interesting story. And she told me why she gave it to me. And you know, we definitely sort of bonded a bit. And uh, the interesting story about this book, and, and, and the poster, if you've seen this, is that um, this was never published. Right, this, uh, but has, has anybody seen this show of hands? Keep calm and carry on. Okay. This was never actually. Uh, this was was initially made during World War II, and if the Germans were to invade, they were going to put this poster up. Right. It's a very typical Brit thing. Uh, you know, keep <laughs> stiff upper lip. But it never got published because the Germans didn't invade, so they didn't have a need for it. Right. So they basically scrapped it all. Uh, it resurfaced many years later. And now that we find ourselves in the midst of this sort of global recession, uh, it's become popular again. And that's the story behind, behind this book, right? And so that's the social part. It's, it's you know, the interactions that I had with her, me telling you this, you telling other people, maybe having uh, you know, conversations around the content in it. That's the social part. Now here's the thing about people. <laughs> Some people are assholes, right? Uh, and um, you know, that's, just, that's just the truth. And <clears throat> this is a chart that I put together uh, as I sort of I was going through my own transformation in social media, and I believe that lots of other people do. And it's sort of like a religious process. Like you start off as an unbeliever, then you're skeptical, and you know you become this new convert, and eventually you become this self-righteous jerk. And no one wants to be in the same room as you because all you're doing is talking about social media. <laughs> but at some point, you become more humble after that. Now here's the here's the thing. I was an asshole. Okay, and, and here's my story about why I was an asshole and how I came to this realization. I came to this realization because at one point there was a very prominent blogger and author. I'll leave the name out of it because I have a little karma uh, side story to that. And um, there was a debate going on saying, you know, was this person really engaging in social media? He had a blog, but he didn't allow comments. And, and I joined that conversation and I said, yeah, you know, he's not allowing comments. It's not social. So. And this is why karma's a bitch, because this is the guy, <laughs> right, who doesn't allow comments on his blog. And I thought it was interesting that I was tell this story, and it's Seth Godin, you know, and here's the karma part. I feel like he's watching me now. I feel like, I mean, I had no idea that I was going to tell this story. I didn't know that he'd actually be on this magazine. So sorry, Seth, um, you know, now I know that you're watching me, and so I'm, I'm coming clean. Um, and why was I an asshole? Well, I, I was an asshole because I felt very empowered. So here's another story behind social media and how I got involved in it. The top tier of this graphic basically summarizes my experience of trying to um, publish something with a company I worked with, a white paper, and I was told I couldn't publish it. So what I did was I took the, basically the content of that and I started blogging about it. Right? And instead of someone telling me no, the network said, oh, we love this stuff. Keep publishing more. And so I thought, wow, this is amazing. This is transformational. This is like a back door into actually establishing a presence online. And so I became an asshole because it empowered me, right? And so that's kind of why I had that attitude initially. But then that was sort of a transformational initial experience. And then I had another transformational experience. One day my wife comes home and she says, I met this family. 
They're getting evicted from their house. Uh, a woman has been abused in an abusive situation, three kids. One of them has special needs, and I want to help them. There's, their only option is a, um, is a shelter, and I don't want that for them. So I said, okay, well, let's help them. So helping them meant we actually took them into our house for a couple of days. We didn't really have a large house, no basement, but we took them in. And so on sort of day two or day three of this, I realized, you know, we can't be the only ones out there to be a resource to this family. And I've been blogging for a number of years and kind of putting value into the social system, I guess, you know, through blogging and, and giving away these visuals that I do. And so I, had a very, I threw a very simple ask out there. I told my network that I'd never asked for anything in the past, but I wanted to ask for something on behalf of this family and um, wanted to raise some money for them to get them into an apartment. And I threw like an arbitrary number out there, you know, $5,000, thinking that maybe I'd get half of that or, or less. And something really phenomenal happened. Uh, that goal was exceeded by over 300%. And what happened was, basically I put out a blog post and, and let my Twitter community know was what was happening, and it just went nuts. Within an hour, there was like $1,000 worth of donations coming in, and I had it set up basically through PayPal, had this little widget so you could see the progress. It was all direct. Two hours, $2,000. Three hours, $3,000. By the next morning, $12,000. This is all direct. It's all word of mouth. Uh, by the next morning, I didn't even say anything because we had blown away that goal, but people kept talking about this story and the money kept coming in until we hit just under $17,000. And it was $12,000 in less than 24 hours. And so we helped this family out and um, got them into an apartment and basically acted as we, we handled their rent for the next year or so. And that was really transformational for me because that's when I realized you know, it's not just about having an opinion on something, it's about actually helping and contributing. That that's a big part of it. And also, a lot of sort of the theories that I had been working on, um, what I became known for in the space was sort of visualizing these theories around social media and how it works and things like network dynamics. And so things that were kind of abstract, like, well, this is what I think the social network looks like. It's sort of like this collective brain, and, and the neurons are sort of firing synapses, and, and um, we're, we're all in this collective. And, and that really began to take on new meaning because I saw that happen in real time. When I saw the collective spring into action, on behalf of this family. I mean, it was really, really powerful. That meant something to me now. And this is during the height of the recession, right after the holidays, right, when, when people had no money. So it was just amazing to see that all spread and come together and really see, basically, this happen, like people you know, reaching out, connecting with each other, and the speed was amazing. On Twitter, this was during uh, a time when Apple was launching a new product, and we basically took over the conversation. There were more people talking about the story. The woman's name was Daniela. That was actually mentioned more time than Apple, and Apple had a major news release that day. This is another model that I put together to um, basically visualize what, what influence looks like on the web. And, and influence is a big deal on the social web because uh, that's what the social network does. It, it, it amplifies things and, and people who have influence make a difference. And so we, when we were actually out there on behalf of this family, I could see people who had large influential circles. When they got the news out, I felt it. You saw, like, uh, in Twitter, you can measure the number of tweets and retweets, right? So I saw that happen. But I also saw, and, and that it was necessary for there to be a lot of volume. So a lot of people with smaller circles of influence also are making a big difference. So sort of different levels of influence, and they all needed to work together. And um, the best way that I could describe it were sort of like ripples in a pond. Another fascinating takeaway from that whole experience that I really feel applies to social networking and is sort of a key cornerstone of it is it's sort of described as um, the strength of, of, of weak ties. And as we were sort of, as I was looking at who made these donations, I realized I didn't even know half these people. They didn't know me. These were, I had very loose connections with the people and some of them were the biggest donators. So why was that? They, they weren't even my inner so circle or my outer circle. They were sort of in my far outer circle and um, in terms of volume and, and even a number of donations. And that's because they were friends of friends and friends, loose ties to me, but potentially strong ties to somebody else. And another thing I learned from this experience was that really all of this, being in the social space, and whether it's marketing or moving your business forward, it's an act of both planning and improvisation. And um, one of the things I learned from that whole experience after doing it was, you know, there, there, there was some planning that, it went, that went into it, into the logistics, you know, it, it, it had exceeded the expectations. But one thing I didn't plan for was I actually got some detractors through that because it had gotten so much attention 
that people had come out and they just started being critical. You know, you're drawing attention to this family. This woman was in an abusive situation. That's not a great thing to do. And I thought, wow, we're just trying to help out a family. I couldn't believe that. So you have to be able to improvise. You have to be able to act quickly. And as that feedback started coming, I realized that, I had the, that we had this responsibility on our hands. So we started blogging progress. So people really understood the story and they understood why we were doing this. And so we were being transparent about it. So you really have to exist at the intersection of planning and improvisation when you're in the social space. That's where, that's where sort of the sweet spot is. And in terms of, of where a lot of organizations are moving with social media, you know, it's pretty interesting because um, what, what, what companies do and organizations tend to do is they want to leverage social media just in terms of marketing, right? That is the initial near-term opportunity. So conversations often start with, well, we want to do something that's innovative, social, and viral, right? And then what this curve shows is that when you sort of go down that path, at some point, you know, you think it's going to change the world, and then legal gets involved, and they shoot it down, and you end up just putting some kind of video on YouTube, right? And that actually highlights the complexities of what we're dealing with in social, that it's not just about throwing a piece of content out there that you hope people spread, that's actually more complex. It involves different business units, and it involves conversations that happen at those levels. And, um, you know, <laughs> Marketers have some very specific challenges, right? We're addicted to shiny objects, and the, late, the latest craze right now. And so social media is sort of seen as this gold rush. It's this, it's this hot thing right now, and, and everyone's jumping into it without really figuring it out. And we have plenty of other, we've done this before, right? New technologies come out. At one point, it might have been Flash, or, you know, or now it's apps. And so marketers tend to just go after that without fully understanding it and doing the homework or really um, digesting what's changing. And so we, ha you know, we have shiny object syndrome as, as kind of uh, put on the wheel here. And we just kind of spin the wheel and, and we continue to make these mistakes. What we want is more of this. The opportunity you know, and, uh, to reinvent social media is to look at it more holistically. Great example, right? So uh, earlier we were talking about the hashtag, the Twitter hashtag. And you could tell just from looking at the stream on Twitter that people were not happy with it, that it was too long. Right? So the opportunity for TED is not just to just use Facebook or Twitter or any of these social, sh social channels to put the content out to say, this is how great we are. But there's an opportunity to listen. What's being said about our talks? Is there a way that we could actually improve the product? Um, you know, TEDx may have been an example of that. I, I know that there were conversations about TED being too exclusive. Right? And TEDx may have resulted from that. So you have to, once you're in that mindset of using social, not just as your outward marketing, but also as something that can um, make your communications better, make your product better. Obviously, we see a lot of, of, of sort of crisis management where, it's, where people are just, they're out in the social spaces and if they're unhappy, like for example, with certain um, oil companies, they express it, right? And those oil companies have to be in that space. So you've got PR, you've got, uh, you know, research and development, you have marketing, all these things, social affects all these things. Uh, I, I probably will not be presenting about social media within a year or two because it's going to be integrated in these business functions. That's, that's the future. That's how it will be reinvented. The other thing about social in terms of reinventing it is we really have to put the focus on people. And more specifically, what kind of service can we provide? What can we do that's valuable to the community? What can we produce a value, period? Value, producing value is a difficult thing. To go back to my example with Seth Godin, the thing that I had missed, and the reason why I was such an asshole, was because I was overlooking all of the value that he was adding to his community. Every day he, put, he puts up a post, and they're good. right? They're bite-sized morsels of inspiration. They're well-written. They add a lot. And I was overlooking that, fixating on the fact that he wasn't engaged. And I believe that engagement is very, very important. I think, actually, if he was, it would be even better. But value is just as important and actually really difficult for organizations to do. And having substance is also very important. And as a last example, as sort of a glimmer of hope, uh, there is a really sort of extravagant, um, once a year, all these high-flying ad execs get together in the south of France. And, uh, can or con or I don't know, I'm not sure I've heard it pronounced both ways. Uh, but typically, the winners of, of, these, of these sort of, you know, they get these awards and there's one in digital. And um, typically those are really flashy, kind of creative, you know, big celebrity partnership types of initiatives. And this year was really different because what they did was they awarded Best Buy uh, the digital award. And to support my kind of 
thesis on people, what's interesting about this is that there's really nothing fancy about this initiative. What Best Buy does is they let about a thousand of their employees engage on Twitter. They put a system in place so you know, it gives them permission to actually you know, flick them on or off. And it's just their employees actually engaging on Twitter, providing customer support and service. They will sometimes proactively, if you're talking about a problem with an Xbox, they may help you with that in the hopes that someone from Best Buy helped me with this problem. Therefore, I may you know, go out and buy something from them because they provided a service, they provided value. And so this actually took the key award. And what I think is great about that is, is I think it's about people more so than technology. It's not a bright and shiny object. There's substance, substance to it, all those things that I talked about. And this is where social media needs to be reinvented on the people front. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, so we're going to take a moment while 